So today we're taking a look at this really cool effect where um, the black hands kind of like come out of your mouth and then they drag your jaw down and it just looks really cool, yeah. This is actually a two-part tutorial, meaning that in this tutorial, we'll be covering the jaw drop thing. And in the second part, which is the next video, don't forget to check that out, by the way, uh, we will cover the black hands effect. For both tutorials, I will only be using After Effects, so let's jump right into it. One more thing before that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share, most importantly, because it really helps me out. Um, so yeah, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so as you can see, I currently have free clips on my timeline right now, and this is a two-part tutorial, so in this tutorial, we will be focusing on the jaw drop effect, which is only the first clip. We'll get into those other two clips in the next tutorial where we will be adding the black hands and the transition and stuff. And here's one really important point, which I actually didn't follow myself when I was filming this footage. So first of all, it would be really helpful if you can get your actor to open up their mouth as wide as they can when the actual transition is happening. Uh, that way you have more detail to work with when you actually do the distortion and all that stuff. And the second thing, which I did not follow myself, is when you're shooting, make sure to ask your actor to keep their tongue as low as possible so that it's not that visible, if that makes sense. Uh, and here's why. When we apply all this distortion to the face, the mouth obviously becomes giant and so does the tongue inside the mouth. It just, it feels like it's just dancing around in there and it's just is not really flattering so what I had to do in this tutorial obviously there's like always ways around that you can always fix things and what I did here is actually darkened the air the mouth area so that it's not that visible and it worked pretty great so yeah you can always find a way out and last but definitely not least make sure to shoot the scene on a green screen if you do shoot it on a green screen because we'll be applying the liquify effect obviously with the green screen you won't affect any of the background area so the work will be much more effective and much easier and much quicker. Obviously, you can still do it with the normal background without the green screen, but it's gonna be a headache, trust me. And plus, with the green screen, you can either place your character on any background you desire, literally, or you can use whatever location you are already shooting in and uh, just record the empty background, and that will save you so much time. So definitely make sure to use the green screen. Moving on, the first thing that we will need to do is we will need to key out our character. In order to do that, let's create a rough mask around the character just so that we have only the green area which we can remove. Also, I placed the background I will actually be using for this scene at the very bottom and you don't have to do that, you really don't, but it just gives me some perspective and it's just so that I can see how things look like. You will not necessarily need it for this part of the tutorial. I'll speed things up here to save time, but if you do want me to make a professional king tutorial, let me know in the comments down below. I will definitely make one. Once I keyed out my character, and mind you, we will be doing that a lot in this tutorial, um, we need to solo the keyed out layer and we need to render it out. Now, the reason we're doing this is because it will save us a lot of time. It will work, the, the After Effects itself, it will work faster because there's less graphics, less effects applied, and I just recommend doing that. Unless you have like a really insane computer which can handle it all. <laughs> I don't, so, you know. I have to do it. Now, if you want to render your character on the transparent background instead of the black, make sure to go to uh, Output 2, Format, select AVI, and then in Video Output, in the Channels tab, select RGB plus Alpha. Now, if you only select RGB, which I believe it applies automatically, it will render your character on the black background, not as a transparent layer, if that makes sense. I will go ahead and delete all of the clips, all the effects I applied and I'll just replace them with the rendered clip. Great, now I'll go ahead and duplicate the key layer and we will need one of these layers untouched because we'll need it for later, so just save it. I'll hide it later. I'll also create an adjustment layer and trim it so that it fits the timeline. And what I will need to do next is I will need to track my footage. Now, I will be using a spot clone tracker from Red Giant to track my clip 
and this is an amazing plugin. I've been using it for a long time and if you don't have it, I definitely 1 million percent recommend getting it because it tracks things perfectly. Don't worry, if you don't have this plugin, you will still be able to follow along with the tutorial. Um, there is a built-in tracker in After Effects. It does pretty much the same thing. It does a great job, so I don't see the reason you couldn't use it for this tutorial. If you do not own the plugin, just track it with a normal tracker and follow the next steps. Whether you're using the plugin or not, we will need to find a high contrast point where there is a lot of detail so that the tracker tool has something to work with. It is crucially important <laughs> that you track the mouth area and specifically the bottom lip because when we do our effect, the top lip will not be moving and the bottom lip, you know, the, the, the jaw will actually drop. So you will need to track the bottom lip area. Of course, everybody's footage will be different. I pray that you have something that has any detail on the bottom lip uh, that you can track. If not, try to find a way out of this. Maybe track the top lip, maybe an area around the, the bottom lip, something like that. In my footage, I have this small popping highlight on the lip, which is perfect, actually. Once you're done tracking, it is time to create the actual effect. So click on your adjustment layer, uh, find the liquify effect and apply it to this layer. Open up the spot center if you're using the plugin and alt click on the distortion mesh parameter and drag it all the way to spot center. This will link your tracking information to the liquify effect so that when you're applying the liquify thing, it will actually stick to the area you're applying it to. After that, you will want to look through your clip and find the time when you actually want the jaw to drop. And once you found that, go to the beginning of where you want the animation to start and click on the watch next to distortion mesh. Now go to the end where you want your animation to end and and start actually doing the effect. We'll get into that in a bit. But first, I want to explain to you the difference between distortion mesh and distortion mesh offset parameters. So what is distortion mesh? This is the actual effects you're applying. So basically all the, all the distortion you're applying to your character right now, this is distortion mesh. Now, what is distortion mesh offset? This is sort of like a, more of a tracking tool really. So you see this little circle anchor point thingy, it basically, the animation basically follows it. So this is your tracking information. So earlier we linked our tracking information to distortion mesh offset. So now the effects we are applying to using distortion mesh will follow the spot we applied it to. Now at the top you have all these tools you can use to create your um, distortion. Now the only free actually that I used is this little icon. Basically using it you can you can just drag it around and you know it will. I really don't know how to explain that. Just look and <laughs> just look and you'll understand. Um, now this one it makes things smaller. So you know by clicking on it you kind of like make things smaller. Oh my God, I'm the worst at this. And the third one is the reconstruction tool. So I usually do it when I'm done with liquefying things. Uh, so I remove the distortion from uh, any unwanted areas. So obviously when you distort things, it will not only distort that specific area, but everything around it, especially if you're using a bigger brush size. So what I do using, uh, I, I basically use this rec the reconstruction tool and I go over all the areas that I don't want uh, distortion applied to and I remove them you'll see. So as you can see here, I'm using this very first tool uh, and I'm just dragging the jaw down as much as I can, but I'm still keeping a few things in mind because I want it to look realistic. So try to just drag it down and try not to affect the top lip actually and any of that area of the face. Just focus on the, you know, on the bottom area of the mouth and just drag it down. Then you can kind of give a face a little shape, you know, make it more round or on the contrary, more slim and uh, basically you can just fine tune, refine things, whatever. Keep in mind that I'm trying not to touch any of the ear area, any of the top lip area, especially the teeth actually, the, the, the teeth are visible here. I do not want any distortion on them. Anything below the middle of the mouth, if that makes sense, I do not touch it. Okay, cool. I think I'm done with the animation. So the only thing I'll do is I'll select the keyframes and I'll click F9 on my keyboard. And what that does is basically it makes the transition between the keyframes a bit more smooth and realistic. 
Great, our jaw is open and I mean, it's looking pretty great. I mean, I like it. Once again, I will solo the adjustment layer and the character layer and I will render them out because that was just, that was a lot of effects. My After Effects will not handle all of that. So <laughs> let's render it out and replace uh, all the layers with the rendered out clip. So what do we have on our timeline right now? We have two clips, one normal clip, which does not have any effects other than keying. And uh, the second one the distorted, the, the, this whole thing is distorted, right? All the areas around the character are distorted. So what do we do now? Obviously we take the distorted layer and we only mask out the area that we need. Now this can be a bit of a headache process, but actually in this case, it didn't take me long. It took me like maybe 10 minutes tops. So it's really pretty quick because it's really not as difficult as it sounds. So let's just go where the animation ends and create a beautiful mask around the jaw area. You can sort of see how I'm creating this mask. I'm being really careful and I'm only taking the areas that I will actually need. Go ahead and open up the mask properties, uh, click on the keyframe and start actually animating your mask. So yeah, you do have to go frame by frame, but like I said, it did not take me that long. The main thing is actually the, the actual transition, like how he's opening, like how the jaw is dropping down. Uh, then it kind of just stays still and it's a matter of, you know, just moving the mask around, not so much adjusting it. And in my case, it was only for a few seconds. So, you know, not that long. Great, the mask is applied and looking beautiful. Now we'll just need to refine a few things and we're actually so close to the end. We're not quite there yet, but we're so close. Obviously the mask is looking a little sharp. We'll need to feather it out a little bit. I will leave it at actually just like four, something like that, maybe three. It's looking great, but we're missing a shadow under our distorted face. So let's just duplicate the key distorted layer and put it at the bottom beneath the, the, the original distorted layer. <laughs> Uh, then I'll apply the tint effect, make sure that it's all completely black. Um, I will adjust the position a little bit so that it's a little bit below, you know, I will, I will drag it a little bit down so that it looks like a shadow. Now, as you can see, my shadow is kind of like sticking out a little bit. So I'll create a mask around it and I'll subtract it so that we get rid of that area. But you can see that the shadow is still a little bit on the background and obviously we don't want that. We only want to apply it to our um, character layer. So what I will do is I will duplicate my character layer. I will drag it on top of the distorted layer and I will click on the distorted layer and and on the track mat, I will select alpha. I know this was kind of complicated, but I, I hope you get what I mean. And now, as you can see, it only sticks to our character layer. It does not go overboard and it does not affect the background. Cool, so the only thing that's missing is some Gaussian blur because right now it's just really sharp. So let's just apply some Gaussian blur or actually I'll use Fastbox blur because it's just, you know, we don't really need that much detail. So you can adjust the position if needed so that everything fits perfectly. So here I change the blending mode to soft light and then I duplicated two of these layers uh, again and I changed the blending mode again to overlay. Cool, now we only want the shadow to appear as the jaw drops. So let's go to where the animation starts, set the keyframe to zero and then go to where the animation is supposed to end and obviously uh, set the opacity to whatever we want it to be. As you can see for the soft layer, I used the opacity of 100% and for the overlay layer, I used like only 15%, really little. Great, our effect is looking pretty amazing. I mean, I love it. One more thing that is missing is that shadow in the mouth I was talking about because I fucked up a little bit and I didn't shoot it the right way. Yeah, I just want to darken the mouth area a little bit. So I will create a new adjustment layer. I will place a curves effect on it. I will make it really, really dark, okay? Now I will create a mask. It can be just a rough mask, honestly, in the mouth and um, I will feather it a lot. Now my character is moving around just a little bit, so animate the mask path. I mean, I barely create a few keyframes, you know, so it's really, it will take you a minute. The only thing is obviously the mouth opens, so obviously we need our mask to follow the animation. And 
also don't forget about the opacity. At the end, it's 100. At the beginning, it's zero. And that's it. We're done with this part of the tutorial. Now make sure to stick around for the second one because it's going to be really interesting. We're going to add the black hands, white eyes, composite the whole thing. It's going to be pretty awesome. And the black hands actually dragging the jaw to the bottom, it will look pretty impressive. So I recommend checking that out. This is the first part of the tutorial all done. Watch out for the second part. Um, it's gonna be really cool. Don't forget to watch that. And if you did like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. You can also click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any future uploads. And see you in the next video.